ever heard of a sea witch? <laughs> oh no! Time's almost up, by the way. Uh-oh, I had to get the prince to declare his love for me, and fast. If that didn't happen soon, then I'd be a sea urchin forever. What's the matter, dear? Cheer up, it's a party, right, Prince Jeff? Wait a second, your voice. You sound so familiar. Darling, don't you remember me? I rescued you. You fell in love with me, remember? I remember now. And you said we were to be married, remember that? That's right. Great! All right, who's ready for a royal wedding? Cool. Sounds great. Mazel tov. Oh no, everyone was hypnotized by the evil sea witch's spell. Well, everyone except for me, Dolph, and my dad. If Prince Jeff marries her, then the sea witch will take over the entire sea kingdom. And she'll be royalty here on land if she marries the prince. She could take over the whole world. We gotta stop this. Today we're reading The Little Mermaid Becomes Human. Whoa, giggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a little mermaid, very little. See, there she is. Aww. The Little Mermaid was not just a mermaid, she was also a princess, daughter of the mighty sea king. And she had five older sisters, also princesses. Story time. One of the Little Mermaid's favorite things to do was listen to her sister's stories about the world beyond the water. Human people have eight legs. Ooh. They kind of look like octopuses. I think it's octopi. <laughs> Whatever. And some humans have a horn Ooh. on their head, like a narwhal. No way. You'll see. Land people have eyes all over their bodies, so they can see everything at once. Nuh-uh. Yeah, they do. Dad, is it true that human people have eight legs and a narwhal horn and lots of eyes and that they wrestle sharks and eat whale blubber for dessert? The only thing you should know about people is that they can be dangerous and you should never speak to one. Uh. But of course she did grow up. See, there she is, right before her 18th birthday. Hi, <laughs> let me tell you about life as a sea princess. We lived in a palace made of shells and pieces of treasure from sunken ships. And you've heard of a school of fish, right? That's where we studied and learned. Actually, we did lots of things that human girls do, just a little differently. To swim or not to swim, that is the question. You should have seen me in South Pacific. The Ocean Times said I was a star. Imagine, me a starfish. <laughs> so basically, I was just a regular girl. Oh, except my best friend, a dolphin. <laughs> Hi there. I guess you humans might not think that's too regular. The craziest adventure was when we sneaked into the sea witch's house. She lived in a giant sunken pirate ship. Super creepy, but also, Super cool. The sea witch had gone out to get a carton of whale milk for her coffee. We swam inside and... Wow. Cool. We were playing with a sword. Well, I was. Dolph can't hold a sword. No hands. And I was just about to defeat the pretend pirate ghost that I was battling when... La 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 Hide. No, let's get out of here! Out of where? Ah. Care to tell me what you're doing in my house? Nothing. Yeah, we took a wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, we don't even like it here. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I'm, uh, see ya! Not so fast. Are you the daughter of the king? Um, yeah? I saw you on TV. You sang the Oceanic Anthem before the big squid dash in the orca race last year. Oh, down in the sea, or the clouds or the light, or the sea sponge we. Oh, I just love your voice. Oh. Here, have some tea. Oh, why, thank you. Yes, a beautiful voice. You wouldn't want to trade it, would you? <laughs> My voice? Yes, I would give you something wonderful in return. Anything you wished. Ooh. We should really get going. Yes, 
I hate to be rude, but no thanks. Okay, we are never going back there. Definitely not. See you tomorrow at my place? Not if I see you first. Anyway, you may be wondering what was happening the next day. Nothing major. Just my 18th birthday! <laughs> we were having a huge party and everyone was there. All my friends and my sisters and my mom and dad. <laughs> there was a piñata, tons of balloons, and a pin the tail on the tiger shark. Hey, cut that out! And of course, we had a huge cake! <laughs> no candles though, because you know, water. <laughs> but I still made a wish. I wish that when I swim to the top of the ocean and look out, that I'll see a real live human prince. A handsome one. Not like what my crazy sisters keep telling me about. Like, I hope he only has two eyes. <laughs> like the handsome princes I've seen in my fairy tale books. I want to see him dance and ride a bike and play soccer. Oh, and I'd also like to dance and ride a bike and play soccer. That sounds cool. Hey, maybe I want to be a human. Just for a little while. Ahem. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, <laughs> and I'm done. What do you wish for? I can't tell you that, but I will tell you that first thing tomorrow morning, we're going to the top of the ocean. I do that every morning. It's how I breathe. Oh, the Little Mermaid was so excited about her first trip to the surface of the ocean that she could barely sleep. She tossed and turned in her bed all night. Finally, she drifted off to sleep and dreamed of having human feet. Hello, fellow human people. Thank you for coming to my dance recital. <laughs> now watch me dance with my brand new feet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Eyeball guy. Yuck. But the prince was really handsome. The next morning, the Little Mermaid and Dolph swam to the top of the ocean where the water meets the sky. The last one there is a rotten turtle egg. Look, a ship. When the Little Mermaid and Dolph got to the surface, they looked out and saw a magnificent ship, definitely fit for a prince. What prince? That prince. What a dream boat. It is a nice boat, I guess. <laughs> no, he's the dream boat. <laughs> That means he's a total cutie pie. I don't like pie. Humans love pie. Gosh, you don't know anything about people, do you, Dolph? I know that that one is looking right at us. What? Ah! I can't let the prince see me like this. Like what? As a mermaid. But you are a mermaid. Yeah, and he's a human, Dolph. Maybe we should go home. I have a better idea. Let's go see what he's doing now. It's his birthday too? O-M-G whiz. We are so meant to be. Look, Aww. he's about to blow out his candles. Real candles, Dolph. Dolph, they are dancing. That's dancing? It looks like they got shocked by an electric eel. It's beautiful. Okay, show's over. Let's go home. Wait, look. I wish I didn't have to get married. At least, not to any of the princesses around here. I just want to meet someone who gets me. I'm here! It's me! Be mine! Huh? Ah, ah, ah. Whoa! I'll save you! I'm on it! We'll never be able to get him back on the ship. Let's carry him to shore. Got him! Who are you? I'm the one you wished for. We have to go. But... No buts. Let's go. Goodbye, my prince. I'll come back for you. I promise. And so the little mermaid went straight to the sea witch. Ah, the king's daughter. What do you want, sweetheart? Um, well, I wanted to ask you, um, about feet. You want to ask me about feet? Well, I guess what I really want is to be... A human. Really? How interesting. Is it? You know, when you were here last, I offered you a trade. You can have anything you wish for, and I'll have your voice. Okay, here's what I can do. I'll grant your wish. You'll be a human. Really? But you only have one month. If you can't make the prince fall in love with you in one month, then you'll return to the sea. 
not as a mermaid, but as a sea urchin. And everyone knows sea urchins are the worst. Yeah, and they're awful. Oh, and I will be needing that voice of yours. But how will I talk to the prince? He needs to hear how funny and charming I am. <laughs> he needs to hear me sing. Oh, and hear my laugh. <laughs> we can trade. Trade? Who are you? I'm the girl who saved you. <laughs> oh, sea witch. Well, maybe it's more mysterious and enchanting with no voice at all. Deal? Deal. Abracadabra. Pleasure doing business with you. What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, your feet? Just swim towards the land. When you emerge from the water, you will have your very own feet. Oh. The Little Mermaid swam towards the shore faster than she'd ever swum before. She was so excited. But then she started to think about everything that was at stake. What if she and the prince didn't get along? Oh no, she hadn't thought of that. What if the plan backfires and she gets turned into a sea urchin never to see Dolph and her family ever again? But the Little Mermaid soon forgot her worries because she had arrived at the beach. She had two fully functioning, not at all tentacly feet. Ow, 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 owie, ow, 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 ugh, ugh. Sea urchin, <laughs> told you they were the worst. First order of business, shoes. I know all about shoes because of the fairy tales I've read. <laughs> Maybe I can get some glass slippers like Cinderella. <gasps> These are perfect. May I help you? Oh, I forgot about the whole no talking thing. Darn sea witch and her weird spells. Don't worry kids, I can still talk to you guys, but just no one in the story can hear me. Wait, where are you going? You have to pay for those. You know, with money? Do you have money? I'll buy them for her. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What happened? Why don't you have any shoes? I think she's saying she fell off the boat. You poor thing. You must have hit your head or something when you fell overboard. I'll take care of you. You'll live in the palace until you're better. Um, awesome. <laughs> if she's the princess, then she must be related to the prince! <gasps> and then it was time to go to the palace. Oh man, was it nice. Don't get me wrong, I love the sea palace, but this place was amazing! The princess and I chilled out by the pool, where I tried to impress her with my water skills. <sighs> Turns out it's a lot harder without a tail. Still, it was fun. Could it really be this easy? First day as a human, I'm already best buds with the princess. <laughs> and it was only getting better because it was almost dinner time and that meant I would meet the prince. I was so nervous. Surely the prince would recognize me and it would be love at first sight or second sight, whatever. <laughs> but when we went to dinner, it was like he'd never seen me before in his life. Bummer. The princess explained to everyone that she had found me wandering around the town with no shoes, hungry and lost after I'd fallen off a ship passing in the night. She was wrong, obviously, but works for me. <laughs> hey, I fell off a ship yesterday, too. Small world. Yeah, he fell overboard at his birthday party. He thinks a mermaid saved him. <laughs> it's true. I can't remember her face, but I'm positive I saw her. Mermaids aren't real, Jeff. Dinner is safe. I guess she doesn't like fish. She might just be full. The best thing I learned was how to dance. The royal ball is coming up and you have to go. It's so much fun. Oh, ignore him. He still misses his imaginary mermaid girlfriend. <laughs> You're very good at line dancing. Save a dance for me at the ball. Awesome. He likes me. Well, he doesn't exactly know that it's me he likes, but we're gonna dance at the ball. That's something. Jeff, you know that Daddy is going to make you dance with Princess Esmeralda all night? That's who Jeff is supposed to marry. They've been promised to each other for years. Wait, what? But that's not how this is supposed to go. While the Little Mermaid was busy thinking, the Sea King and all the Little Mermaid sisters were looking all over for her. Hi, excuse me, your highness. I uh, might know where your daughter is, maybe. You do? Where? I think maybe she found a way to go on land, your majesty, sir. The Sea Witch. I'll just make a new deal with the Sea Witch. No, never negotiate with witches. 
But off they went to make a deal with the evil sea witch. What if you could have my palace? Say what now? You send me to land as a human. And if I can't get my daughter back, you win. You get my kingdom. Now that's interesting. And what happens to us if we fail? If you fail, you turn into a jellyfish, and I will have everything. Okay, let's review the pros and cons here. It's a deal. It's finally time for the royal ball. Here ye, here ye, please make way for the lovely Princess Esmeralda. Whoa, we have legs. This is cool. I don't like it. These are feet. They're totally weird. Meanwhile, back at the ball, the Little Mermaid had gotten a chance to meet Esmeralda and... Guys, Princess Esmeralda was totally cool. She was funny and pretty and smart and totally a good dancer. But Jeff just stared out at sea, looking for his mermaid. Then the Sea King and Dolph arrived at the royal ball, disguised as guests. Everyone welcomed them to the party. The Little Mermaid, of course, was a little suspicious. Right? I mean, why are they here? The two of them hatched a plan to make the Little Mermaid fall out of love. They put marbles on the dance floor to make them look clumsy. But the Little Mermaid just thought it was a cool new dance and joined in. They released helium out of party balloons to make his voice all squeaky. Would you like a glass of punch? Whoa, what's up with my voice? But the Little Mermaid thought the prince was just being so hilarious. Ugh, who could like a human? Suddenly, the Sea King had an idea. I'll just tell everyone that my daughter's a mermaid. The royal family would never let their son marry a mermaid. Excuse me, I have an announcement. Oh no. I just wanted to say it's so refreshing to see how nice you are to this mermaid. Mermaid? Mermaid? Right there. You're a mermaid? My mermaid! And the sea witch gave her feet! The sea witch? This guy's hilarious. I mean... Right? Who ever heard of a sea witch? <laughs> oh no! Time's almost up, by the way! Uh-oh. I had to get the prince to declare his love for me, and fast! If that didn't happen soon, then I'd be a sea urchin forever! What's the matter, dear? Cheer up! It's a party! Right, Prince Jeff? Wait a second. Your voice. You sound so familiar. Darling, don't you remember me? I rescued you. You fell in love with me, remember? I remember now. And you said we were to be married, remember that? That's right. Great, all right, who's ready for a royal wedding? Cool. Sounds great. Mazel tov. Oh no, everyone was hypnotized by the evil sea witch's spell. Well, everyone except for me, Dolph, and my dad. If Prince Jeff marries her, then the sea witch will take over the entire sea kingdom. And she'll be royalty here on land if she marries the prince. She could take over the whole world. We gotta stop this. He may have had human legs, but my dad was still the almighty sea king. <gasps> Is this thing on? <gasps> Uh, what's up, your majesty? I need you to gather all your friends. They're here! Whoa! Whoa! Let's go! Start the wedding! We're gathered today, whoa, to join this, whoa! Skip to the end. Prince Jeff, do you? Whoa, 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 whoa! Ah! Mmm, tastes like chicken. <laughs> uh, what happened? The evil sea witch's spell is broken. Hey, that guy has a tail. And look, she's a mermaid. Uh, uh-oh. Wait a minute, it's you. It is. <laughs> you can talk. I can. <laughs> and you're a real mermaid. Yeah. Jeff. Are you okay? Absolutely. I told you mermaids were real. Six months later. So everything was working out great. The sea witch was defeated and her spells were broken. 
I didn't turn into a gross sea urchin, and my dad and Dolph weren't turned into jellyfish. Yay! <laughs> Esmeralda admitted she didn't want to get married anyway. Convenient. <laughs> and Prince Jeff finally found his mermaid. Moi. <laughs> and best of all, after lots of begging and explaining, my dad and Prince Jeff's parents agreed that it would be okay if he and I went on a real date. So far, so good. And by the way, um, milkshakes are delicious. <laughs> hey, wanna hear me sing? Of course. <laughs> the end. The Little Mermaid and the Prince lived happily ever after. Today we're reading Rapunzel Makes a New Friend. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a man and woman who were very much in love. Let's just call them Tom and Sally. Sally was going to have a little baby. They were so happy, but also nervous because they didn't have very much money. We don't have enough room for a baby. And don't even get me started on Dame Gothel. Did I forget to mention that they lived in a teeny, tiny hovel rented from Dame Gothel? Yes, that Dame Gothel. The witch. knew for sure if she was a witch, but she wore very witchy looking clothes and had a very witchy laugh. <laughs> so yeah, Tom was right. Her backyard wasn't exactly the best place to raise a baby. One night, Sally awoke with the most peculiar craving. I'm hungry. I could go for some Rapunzel flour. What? Those little weeds that taste like spinach? I want some. Where am I supposed to get Rapunzel at three in the morning? Dame Gothel has a growing in her garden. She'll put a curse on me if I steal her Rapunzel. Oh, shush. She'll understand. And so that's how Tom found himself creeping around in the witch's garden at three in the morning, filling up a basket with Rapunzel flowers. He had just pulled up the last weed when... Him. Just what do you think you're doing? Uh, borrowing? No, you're stealing! I didn't mean to, I promise. My wife was just hungry. She's having a baby. A baby? Yes. Do you like babies? I love babies. I'll make a deal with you. I won't send you to prison if you let me take care of your baby. Like babysit? <laughs> sure, like babysitting. <laughs> Dame Gothel cackled her witchy laugh, but Tom didn't get what was so darn funny. Uh, okay. Thanks. No, thank you. Okay, see you around. When their baby girl was born two days later, Tom had completely forgotten about his deal with Dame Gothel, but she did not. I'm here to take my baby. What? Me and him made a deal. I think I'll call her Rapunzel. And with a poof of smoke, the witch disappeared, taking the baby with her. Uh, Our baby! Oh no! Stop her! Tom and Sally were beyond freaked out. They called the police and formed a search party, but no one could find Dame Gothel and baby Rapunzel. It was like they had disappeared into thin air. But of course they hadn't just disappeared. You know this part of the story. They were in a tower deep in the woods. Here's what you might not know about this fairy tale. Dame Gothel wasn't entirely witchy. She actually tried very hard to be a nice mommy to the new baby. She gave her the best baby toys. She sang her the sweetest lullabies. rock a baby on the treetop. Well, she tried. Dame Gothel even tried to make silly faces to get Rapunzel to laugh. But baby Rapunzel must have known that this wasn't her real mommy, so she pretty much never stopped crying. The only thing that could calm her down was when Dame Gothel brushed baby Rapunzel's hair. Oh, thank goodness, finally. Dame Gothel spent so much time doing Rapunzel's hair that she got really good at it and eventually tried out pretty much every hairstyle there is. And Dame Gothel didn't dare cut Rapunzel's beautiful hair. So over the years, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. By the time Rapunzel was a young lady, it was like world record length. Hey, Dame Gothel, you think I could enter a hair competition or something? I bet I could win a big prize. You know very well that you can't leave the tower. Oh. 
Right, there was that about Dame Gothel. She wouldn't let Rapunzel leave the tower. Not even on a super nice sunny day. Maybe one day. I heard that. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, but one day I'll get out. She'll see. Heard that too. Here are the things Rapunzel did to keep herself entertained all those years. I learned to knit. I read every single book in the Tower Library at least three times. I learned to cook international cuisine. Come on and get it. Spaghetti taco sushi. I learned to dance. Ballet. Tap. Salsa. And hip hop. <laughs> then one day there was a knock at the door. Huh? Who could that be? Dame Gothel never knocks. Yo! I'm selling craft boxes. Do you want to buy one? <laughs> craft boxes? Yeah, they'll keep you entertained for hours. That sounds awesome. Come on up. Well, hi there. I'm Crafty Carolina. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Crafty Carolina. I'm Rapunzel. Oh, that's nice. Do you live up here all by yourself? Well, my mother, Dame Gothel, lives here too sometimes. But now that I'm old enough, I stay here alone a lot. May I show you my crafting wares? Check that out. Cool, I'll take two. One for me and one for Dame Gothel. Oh, well score, all right, I'll sign you up for two. Uh, you got money? Money? Yeah, you know, that you buy stuff with. Uh, no, I, I don't, but I'll trade you. How about this giant sweater? Yeah, it's kind of warm out. Okay. Well, why don't you just hang out till Dame Gothel gets here and she'll pay you. Okay. Rapunzel and Carolina spent the rest of the day making crafts. Finally, Dame Gothel arrived, but she was very jealous and didn't want to share Rapunzel with anyone. So she was not exactly happy to find crafty Carolina there. Get out of this tower. Ooh, Ooh. All right, gotta go. You are so mean. She could have been my very first friend ever. You don't need friends, you have me. Yeah, you're like a great friend. That's it, you're grounded. Grounded? But I'm not allowed to leave anyway. Well, now I'm boarding up the door so no one can ever come here again. But how are you gonna get in? Oh, right, I know. I'll call Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And you'll throw your hair out the window and I'll climb up it. Really? It's a good plan. <laughs> and so Dame Gothel closed up the tower so that no one could ever visit Rapunzel ever again. Rapunzel was sad. She had always been alone, so she never knew what it might be like to have a friend. Now that Rapunzel knew, she felt extra lonely. It was taking some serious getting used to pulling Dame Gothel up the tower with her hair. Ow! Ow! Oh, take it easy! Rapunzel took to singing lonely songs, belting them from the tower window. Lonely, I am so lonely. I ain't got nobody to be up in the tower with me. One day Rapunzel was doing her usual, singing sad ballads from the tower window, when two brothers, princes, heard her voice in the forest. Halt! What's that? It's an angel. Uh, okay. I must find her. You're on your own, dude. I'm going back to the palace. Peace. The first prince set off to find the source of the singing. But the forest was echoey, and at every turn it sounded like the singing was coming from a different location. It was like he was going in circles. But then, just before nightfall, he found her. <gasps> She's beautiful. The prince, who was named Prince Edward, by the way, returned every day for a whole month. He would just sit and listen, silently applauding at the end of each song so as to not be noticed. At home, his brother Brad teased him. How's your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. You totally like her. Edward has a crush. <laughs> no, I don't. <sighs> Whatever, dude. Well, maybe I do. And one day I'll talk to her and we'll fall in love and then I'll ask her to marry me and be my queen. This got Brad's attention. You see, Prince Edward was next in line to be crowned king, but there was one catch. He had to be married. Prince Brad had always assumed this would never happen and that he would become king. He already had a girlfriend, Princess O'Gree, so marriage would be no problem. Edward's way too shy. He'll never even talk to the tower girl. I'll marry Ogret before dad retires and then I'll be king. The next day, Prince Edward set up his usual spot and listened to the sweet sounds of Rapunzel singing. Are you there? Are you anywhere? 
Then suddenly the singing stopped. What? No! Keep singing forever. I wonder who that could be. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel, is that the name of the lovely songstress? I love it. Then the prince watched in awe as Rapunzel dropped her golden braid down the side of the tower. That little old lady is climbing her hair like a rope. How strange. The prince waited and watched the tower window until again the braid dropped down and Dame Gothel climbed to the ground and hobbled away. Prince Edward waited to be super extra sure Dame Gothel was gone. Then he approached the tower. He cleared his throat and called up in his best witch voice. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Huh? Again? <laughs> I wonder what she wants now. Oh! Sorry, I must be heavier than a little old woman. Who are you? I'm Prince Edward. A pleasure to meet you, my lady. A prince? Really? That's so cool. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, I'm afraid not. That's a bummer. May I use your hair to climb back down? No, it'll hurt you. Never mind. I'll just jump. No, don't jump. You'll hurt yourself. You can use my hair. I wish I didn't have to go. I waited an awfully long time to talk to you. You have? Yes, every day I sat down and listened to you sing, dreaming of the day I would finally meet you. Really? I mean, I guess I am a pretty good singer. The best. I wish you could stay too, but I'll get in so much trouble if Dame Gothel finds you here. How about this? I'll climb that tree and we could talk from there. That way, we're really not breaking the rule, are we? Brilliant! So Prince Edward climbed down Rapunzel's hair and then back up the nearest tree. So your name's Rapunzel, huh? Nice to meet you. And it's nice to meet you, Prince Edward. Prince Edward returned every day to the same spot to talk to Rapunzel. They even played catch. <laughs> Sorry! I'm um, okay. Finally, one day the prince realized something major. He was definitely, most assuredly, in love with Rapunzel. He couldn't hold it in a second. Rapunzel, will you marry me? I'm not even allowed to talk to you, much less marry you. Surely your mom wants you to be happy. I don't think she's my real mom. I think she took me from my real parents. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes I think I can remember my real mom. We'll find your real parents and then we'll be married. Okay, but not now. Dame Gothel will be here any minute. I'll come back for you tomorrow. <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair and hurry, my feet hurt. Back at the palace, Prince Edward couldn't contain his excitement. I'm getting married, I'm getting married. But I'm Prince Brad heard married, Edward's song, and that's not good, kids. Married, Remember, I'm Brad wanted to be king, and their dad was retiring his crown in just one month. If Edward marries that girl, then he gets to be king. I have to stop this. Prince Brad jumped on his horse and rushed to the tower. He arrived just in time to see Dame Gothel climbing down Rapunzel's hair. Bad guy's gonna take your daughter. What? Never! Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair! What's wrong? You know what's wrong. You were planning to leave me! If you want to go, then go. But first, I'm cutting your hair. What? No! Why? I love my hair! <laughs> but there was no arguing with Dame Gothel. She cut off Rapunzel's long locks and kicked her out into the cold, dark night. <laughs> Rapunzel wandered the forest, hoping that somehow she would find Prince Edward but she had never left the tower in her life. The next day, Prince Edward awoke, eager to see Rapunzel. He sang and whistled all the way to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let that hair down. I'm coming up. The braid dropped and he climbed up. We're getting married, we're getting married. Ah! You were coming to take my Rapunzel, weren't you? Where is she? She's gone. You're my prisoner now. Dame Gothel left the prince tied and locked up in the tower. Earlier it had been the happiest day of his life, now it was the saddest. Back in the forest, Rapunzel was desperately trying to find Prince Edward. She walked and walked and walked and walked. And then, rather suddenly, she found herself in a whole new world. Oh, Betty Baldy's beauty parlor. Oh, hey, maybe she can fix my hair. Hi, are you Betty Baldy? Sure am. Sit down, let me fix you up. How's that? Love it! When she saw a familiar face coming in the door. Dame Gothel. 
and she's wearing my hair! Dame Gothel seemed to have taken Rapunzel's blonde braid and fashioned it to a wig of her own! You got some hair. It's all natural, too. Yeah, right. I need a very special hairdo. I'm going to a ball at the palace tonight. A ball at the palace? How fancy! Rapunzel decided that she had better follow Dame Gothel to the party. Uh, hey, I'm, um, I'm on the list. Yeah, okay, see ya. <laughs> now where's Edward? I have to find him. I'm Prince Brad, but when I get married tomorrow, I'm gonna be King Brad. I'm, um, uh, what's that? Oh, okay, coming. I have to go. Talk to you later, okay? I recognize you. You're that girl from the tower. Rapunzel tried to rush out of the palace, but she somehow got caught in a conga line. Edward is supposed to be king, not Brad. Something is seriously wrong here. I bet that old stinker Dame Gothel has something to do with this. Don't worry, Edward's locked away. He'll never get out, ha 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 Rapunzel finally found the door and ran away from the ball. Rapunzel didn't know what to do. She was just about to break down in tears when another familiar face appeared. Well, you look like someone who could use some cheering up. Crafting Carolina, hi! Wait a second, I thought you never left your tower! She kicked me out just because I fell in love. And now she's got my prince locked in a tower. Well, wait a second. I know how to get to the tower. It's on my sales route, remember? Let's go save that prince! Yay! After Crafty and Rapunzel stocked up on all the important stuff, crafting supplies and snacks, <laughs> the two set off into the woods to find the tower. I definitely hear something. Hide! <laughs> Rapunzel and Carolina stepped forward following Dame Gothel, and then they realized they were already at the tower. Rapunzel, what are you doing here? I'm here to save Edward. Crafting Carolina tossed a giant net over Dame Gothel, trapping her. Awesome! Where'd you get that? I made it. Crafty. We took care of Dame Gothel, now we gotta save Edward. What's that? <laughs> Grappling hook. Oh. Never know when you're gonna have to scale a wall. <laughs> Edward! Rapunzel? Edward! You changed your hair! Do you like it? <laughs> I love it! Guys, super sweet reunion and all, but it's almost morning! We gotta go stop a wedding! <laughs> Rapunzel, Prince Edward, and Carolina rush to the palace! Stop! Stop the wedding! Stop the wedding! Edward? My son! Dad. Edward's own brother plotted with evil Dame Gothel to lock him up in a tower so that he couldn't marry me. Well, I've heard enough. Guards! No, I'm the king. I'm the king. Thank you for rescuing my son. <laughs> You're very welcome. Do we get to be married now? <laughs> we were all set up for a party. What do you say, everyone? Yay! Excuse me. So sorry to interrupt, Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Mom, Dad, Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Now let's have a wedding. Yay! <laughs> and so the two lovebirds were finally married, and Rapunzel's long lost parents were there to celebrate with them. It was the happiest of days, just like a fairy tale, don't you think? So Rapunzel and the prince lived happily ever after. Aww, I love it. I get like three wishes or something? With the wave of my magic wand. I love it. Hi there kids, welcome to story time at cool school with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Cinderella's new family. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. <clears throat> That's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> story time, story time. Miss Booksy's gonna meet you inside. Her magic books, Cinderella's dressed in blue. Goldilocks and spinning clock. Hey. Wiggle snap, wiggle snap. Everybody wiggle snap, wiggle snap, wiggle snap. Everybody wiggle snap. My 
my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. My dad was the greatest dad of all time, and our town was super neat too. One day, my dad told me that he was getting married. <gasps> okay, that's not the terrible part. Somehow, he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey! Too late. You snooze, you lose. Those were my two <laughs> new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. My stepsisters had a real sukasa is mikasa kind of attitude. <laughs> In other words, they took all my stuff. I want it. Mine! Gimme! Then they said they were scared of all my animals, so scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go. Take her away! They all have to go! I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping, I did the windows. <laughs> I cleaned non-stop, day in and day out. <laughs> and I was a mess, always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. Then my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move into the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary, but I had my animals and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi guys. <laughs> but I missed my old life, especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. <sighs> then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. <laughs> they were the worst. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> that night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gritzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing. I was all dressed up. And I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. <laughs> What's all that racket? We must get to work immediately! This is so exciting! What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa! I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown. <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny! <laughs> I have to make a dress and my hair. What am I going to do with my hair? My stepmother said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> Voila! The most beautiful dress in the world. Oh, one day, I was cleaning the attic when I found a box. <gasps> Shoes! These must have belonged to my mom. They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass. Everything was coming together perfectly. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes. And my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know. So, do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Oops. I didn't like it anyway. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Welp, back to square one. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. It's finally the day of the ball. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths, manicures, blowouts. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. 
Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest, I was kind of sad. I retreated to the barn with some snacks. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, Oh, if I only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Oh, watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So, how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? With the wave of my magic wand. I love it! Uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani petty soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Bippy boopy blabity boo. These are the bomb. <laughs> oh, they fit <been> perfect. <laughs> okay, I better get on my way. Oh wait, pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. How about this? My Halloween bucket! Well, let me just get it. That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am gonna look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> oh, well, you better get a move on. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot. You, over there. And y'all, over here. <laughs> well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, Fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. Yoo-hoo, Cinderella. The fairy Godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly, Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. <laughs> Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. Ah! Oh, you, uh, you scared me half to death. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Fairy, you gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. <laughs> Say what now? At midnight, you have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. There's always a catch. <laughs> but don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No prob. <laughs> I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella <laughs> continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the friends. You guys, this is going to be the best night ever. At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. The whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl and how happy she looked and how she was being nice to everyone and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. Oh, so, uh, this is some party. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh, my oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah, blue's my favorite color. No way, mine too. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. 
So it's a date. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. So loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. What's that noise? Huh? What's that noise? Oh, it's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone. I gotta go. Wait up, I didn't get your name. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh no. Wait up. Oh no. <laughs> well, it was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go. Wait, you left your shoe. Keep it. Huh? <sighs> At least the carriage is the... Great. <laughs> and so with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home. She wasn't too sad though. I mean, guys, <laughs> the prince danced with me a ton. And I made so many friends. And I did a conga line and the limbo and the robot. <gasps> and I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way! We'll see who he putts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. The Royal Mini Golf Tournament? I almost forgot! I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. What girl? <laughs> this girl's Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. The big day of the Royal Mini Golf Tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with the prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow. Oh, I guess it can. Oops. Heads up. Hey, do I know you? Eek, the prince, what do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella. Play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else, uh, right? Yeah. What? Okay, gotta go. That couldn't have been. Or could it? Great. Just great. I blew it. Uh, princes like princesses, right? I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella. Uh, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinder who? <laughs> oh. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That's great. Uh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Whatever. That's cool. <laughs> Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this. He doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure. He thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. So, like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it because I'm a private eye. The key word being private. But he says she's super cool. Well, got to get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Well, the good news is, the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> the bad news is, I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed, and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too! Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has the shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So like, our feet need to look good. The prince is coming here? Yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah, me. No way, me. Fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. The prince is here. <laughs> Let me try on that shoe. Me first. No, me. Hi, Princey. Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Pretzel. Uh, looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get it for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. 
the prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Okay. Oh, now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stink it up. Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! O-M-G! No way! Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. <gasps> I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince, over there! <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. Now he knows I'm not a princess, this is terrible! And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform raggedy ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful beautiful princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. You don't need a fancy dress or shoes. Hold up. Uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo. So it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. With all the shoe trying on hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship of Pirate Krusty Beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. <laughs> Arrgh! What are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate! My girl! Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Zippity, zamaboo, ta ta, and bye bye. Yay! When we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out, she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lives happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsisters stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. The end. Cinderella and the prince lived happily ever after. Story time.